Hebrews chapter number what? Amen. Hebrews chapter number. It's going to be good today, boy. Woo! <laughs> that thing going to be good today. It's always good. Somebody tell me why. Because it's the word of God. It's always good. Hebrews chapter number 10. I've been teaching a few weeks on the series. It's already written. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 10. All right, let's do our smile on the next side. Turn to the perk to your left, to your right. Show them your 32s, your 22s, your 12s, your 2s, whatever you have left to work with. Amen. Everybody ought to be smiling. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing to see somebody with two big old gaps in them. They'd be. <laughs> so that boy know he's missing something up in. Especially late, they'd be like, won't he go get his teeth fixed? Some of them been wearing it so long, a lot of them tell them, oh, he looks so sexy like that. <laughs> he don't look sexy, you just desperate. <laughs> I'm desperate for you. All right, let's hold our Bibles up and let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Come on, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am, I am what, it says I am. what it says I am. I can do, I can do what, it what it says I can do. I can have, I can have what it says I can have. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. I believe the word from Genesis through Revelation. So let God be true, every man, a woman, a liar, in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Hebrews 10, 7, it said, then I said, let everybody look at me. It ain't going to never happen until you say it. God, let me tell you that. It ain't going to happen until you. I know God already said it, but it won't happen until you. Then Jesus said, then I said, behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. So I've been teaching a few weeks on this series. It's already written. And we say our objective is to let you know that your story has already been written or finish with God, expected end in mind. Expected end. It's all, somebody says already written. You are living out what is already written. The only reason you don't live out what is already written is disobedience. The Bible says to, to, to obey is better than sacrifice. To disobey is as the sin of witchcraft or as being, being stubborn. So it is already written. We said that God never starts something until it's already finished. See, look, a good example, the other day, we got certain shows that we, my family and I, we watch together. They got, I got certain shows I watch by myself, and they got certain shows they watch by themselves, but then we got certain shows we watch as a family. One of the shows that we watch right now is called The Good Doctor. So we tape The Good Doctor. I like quirky people. That's why I like y'all. I, I, <laughs> see, I like quirky people. <laughs> see, I, I, like, I, like, I like quirky people. So the good doctor, we watch it together. So the other night, we was watching it, and I fell asleep. So the other night, I put it on. My wife said, you going to watch this again? I said, yeah, because I fall asleep. She already seen it. Family, it's already written. So when she said that, God already told me, see, it's already, your life has already been written. See, that's why it didn't phase her. I said, you want me to watch it some other time? She said, no, go ahead and watch it. I'm reading. I read. See, let me tell you something. You're living out a life right now that's already been written. She already knew the plot, what was going to happen in that episode. God already know. He, you up there, you all messed up walking that night talking about God, uh, uh, what's going on? He said, baby, you in chapter 4. Keep on, chapter 5 is coming. See, you, you, all, in, in, you, you all in a, in, in a, in a frenzy, in a, in a, in a, all messed up, ancient. God said, baby, that's just part of the story. Already know what the end looked like. See, Linda already knew that I hadn't saw the end of it. <clears throat> and then when you see the end, you don't want nobody telling you. Right. Are you with me? Family, it's already been written. For I know the thoughts and plans that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans to prosper you, to give you an expected end. So God never starts something until it's finished. We said that God, we said that God, begin, he said uh, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 46, verse, uh, verse number 10, he speaks the end from the beginning. I like what the message Bible said, from the very beginning. And then Isaiah 46, 3 says, from the beginning, 
I reveal to you what would happen. From the very beginning, I reveal to you what would happen. He said, these words came out of my mouth, and I made them known. Somebody say suddenly. suddenly. And suddenly I act. That's how God is. God is a suddenly God, brother. Suddenly things going to happen in your life. Are you with me, family? And then we talked about two words. We talked about the, the Logos word and the Rhema word. We said that the Rhema word, the Logos word, is the written word. Somebody say the written word. It's the inspired word of God. Then we talked about the rhema word, which is the spoken word of God. It's the spoken word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Now watch this here, family. Go to Psalms. Let's get into our new information now. That's a quick review. Psalms 127. Psalms what? Psalms 127. Now, this is what you come to church for, what I'm, what I'm about to give you right now. Psalms 127. Seven. Psalms 127. Psalms 127. Most people are laboring in vain. How many of y'all heard what I just said? Most people are laboring in vain. Amen. Because it's already written. See, most people are laboring in vain. See, they think they came here and then they have to figure life out. But God has already written your story about you. So most folks are laboring in vain. This is good. 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 Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Then I'm going to make a statement, family. Psalm 127. If you're there, say amen. When, look up at me. Look at me. Hold, uh, watch this here. Streaming live. Look at me. Look what I'm going to say. That's why most folks say it. <clears throat> when they get to the end, look what they say, Bunny. If I had to do it over again, I'd do something different. But Bernard, let me tell you something. As a believer, Faleen, you won't say that. You know why? Because you know God going to take, watch this, Victor. He going to take everything. Somebody say everything. Everything, everything Monica, you've been through, he going to turn it for your good. No believer going to get to the end and say that. Because God going to work everything for your good. That's why most folks get to the end and tell me, if I had over again, I wouldn't marry I would have never marry her. <laughs> or if I had to do it over again, when I saw that joker coming, when he asked me for my number, I'd have cussed him out. No, I ain't talking about curse. I the cuss. Y'all know the difference between a curse and a cuss, don't you? If I know that. <laughs> Come on, fam. Come on. We old enough. We done been through some relationship. A lot of y'all. Women of God. Yeah. You the cuss that. <laughs> See, but watch this here, fam. Watch this. Ain't nothing like having the right mate. Linda is the right mate for me. And what she know it or not, I'm the right mate for her. She get mad at me sometimes. And it don't be pastor. Me, TJ, mad. Look, is this girl get ready to cuss this? See, now, we, we, we're perfect for each other. But I was married before. It, I, it wasn't time. Not that the young lady wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. See, some, a lot of times you're ready, but the person ain't ready. And you need to be still and let God be God. Yeah, See, if she had to do it over again, she would have waited or got somebody else. I, I, are you with me? Yeah. Family, it's already been written about you. See, it's already been written about you. See, and most folks are laboring in vain. That's why when they get to the end and say, I would have I never took that job. I would have never married that person. I would have never gotten that relationship. I would have never bought that house. I would have never started that business. See, but the Bible says the steps of a good man. I'm telling you, family, since I've been born again this, this October, this October, this October, we in 2018, I'll be 25 years. Every, my steps been ordered now. Ain't nothing I didn't did the last 25 years, bro, Bill, I'm sorry for right now. Because everything been. And also, Miss Vesson, when I got born again, he, didn't, he started working everything out for my good now. See, now overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. But most folks, listen to me, they're laboring in vain. Okay, Psalms 127, let's go. Because I, I, I got so much to give you. Amen, amen. Everybody look at me. Stream of life. You come for that page right there. Everything I'm going to teach you is on that page right there. We're going to get down right here. You came for that page right there. Y'all ready? Watch this here. Watch this here, family. Uh, Psalms 127, verse number one, if you dare say amen. amen. It said, unless, somebody say unless. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, 
they labor in vain who builds it. See, somebody say, I'm the house of the living God. He said, unless God is building your life, he ain't talking about no physical house. He said, unless God is building your life, you are laboring in. Boy, you, I'm glad, you better be glad you came today. Most folks are laboring in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who builds it. See, now, now watch this here, fam. Now, now watch this here. We're going to get down now. We're going to get down. Uh, where you want to go first, Holy Spirit? Where you want to go first? Unless the Lord builds the house. Go to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter, unless the Lord builds the house. Those that uh, are labor, a lot of folks are laboring in vain. They're laboring in vain. Amen. Unless God is building your life, you're laboring in vain. And when you get to the end, you're going to be so dissatisfied. That's why a lot of folks want to get to go see the Lord. How about all them songs? I can't wait to see the Lord. I ain't singing them songs. <laughs> the devil is a lie. I told you God came that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. Amen. Only people struggling trying to get to the other side. Baby, I ain't trying to get to the other side. I'm on the other side. Unless the Lord builds the house, <coughs> most folks are laboring in what? Most folks are laboring in what? Okay, now watch this, family. Let's look at our definition of the word vain. Look up, look, look, watch this here. Let's look at our definition of the word vain. Y'all read it? See, most people are laboring in vain. Look, look at it here. The word vain means what? Having no real value. Your life, I'm talking about your life, though. Don't have no real value. Pointless, hopeless, futile, useless, unsuccessful, unproductive to the point of frustration. Most people, why do you think a, a rich man, a drunk, or put a gun in his mouth and kill himself? Tell me, I'm down to my last five million dollars. You should have signed that money over before you pull that trigger. <laughs> why do you think people commit suicide? Why do you think this preacher stand up every week and say, anybody dealing with sickness, suicidal thought, aching in your body, pain? Deli See, why? Because, watch their family, unproductive, they're frustrated. See, the Bible says where there's no vision, the people, you come here so you can get clarity of vision. See, where there's clarity of vision, there's acceleration toward the known goal. You're walking around, baby, because you've got vision. See, most folks don't have vision, and people are perishing, Watch it. He said, where there's no vision, the people are perishing. You come in here, so every week I'm taking the windshield wiper and making your vision more clear. So a lot of people, they are frustrated. And then I say something, Holy Spirit, I say something through me, and then it hits, ooh, that, that's ooh. You hear people hollering in the service. Ooh, that's it. See, that's why I went through that. So every now and then you hear, ooh. See, see, because most people, they're unproductive, unproductive to the point of frustration. They frustrated. Frustrated. That man frustrated you. That woman frustrated. Them kids frustrated you. That job is frustrated. You've been on 30 years. I I Pastor, I'm just, because you've been on the wrong thing for 30 years. <laughs> Amen. You've been on the wrong thing for 30 years. You're frustrated. So they unproductive in the, at the, to the point of frustration. Proverbs chapter. What, what I tell you the current family? We're going to come back to exit. But I, I, watch, I skipped something. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter number 16. I skipped something. And when you skip something, you'll break something. <laughs> where are we going? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter. When you, when you skip something, somebody got to help you. Proverbs chapter number. Come on, folks. Let, watch this, family. Unless the Lord builds the house, unless God is building the house, you're going to labor in vain. I labor in vain for 30 some years. Thank God for Romans 8.28. So in Proverbs 16, verse number 3, Proverbs 16, 3, if you're there, say amen. In Proverbs 16, 3, watch this here, family. 
Watch this here. In Proverbs 63, he says, commit your works to the what, family? Lord. Commit your works to the what? Lord. And your thoughts will be what? Yes. Now, watch this. I, you know, one of the ways that God teaches me is through translation. That's how God teaches your pastor. I get one word, Miss Bess. He, he takes me to 20 different translations when I close the book. One translation says something different than all the rest of them, and, and it'll trigger something. So the word he said, commit your, your work. The word works means your deeds, your efforts. Watch this here. Your plans. Watch this here, family. Your action. So commit your deeds, your efforts, your plans, your action, your works to the Lord. And he said, your thoughts going to be established. What are, you, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying? Everybody look at me. What are you saying? This, this is what I'm saying. Most of us, we'll start a business, Selena, and ask God to bless it. Say, God, see, God ain't obligated to bless something you start. See, he's the author and the finisher of your faith. The Bible says God who has begun this good work in you, <coughs> he shall complete it. So this is what most folks do. Most folks start a business and they say, God, pastor, will you come by and bless my bed? Your pastor can pray all he wants to. If God ain't told you to do that, we're just going to be in there speaking words. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be in there touching all the wall in the name of Jesus. I call customers from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You won't have root. They walk. And then, and then all of a sudden, years later, Pastor God ain't told me to do that. Let me tell you something. A man of God told me years ago. So everybody say years ago. He said, Terry, when you watch this, commit your works, commit your plans, commit your efforts, commit your action to the Lord, and he'll cause your thoughts to become agreeable with his thought. He said, Terry, when you're doing what God called you to do, it's already blessed. Amen. See, you don't have to pray for fresh start new beginning. Fresh start new beginning is from God. It's already, it's already blessed. But that's what we're doing, Miss Best. We laying hands on people. We trying to resurrect stuff. We're trying to res resurrect stuff that ain't going to never get up. You don't, let me tell you something, family. He said, the problem is you ain't committed unto him. He said, God, do you want me to do this here? If he don't want you to do it, he'll stop you. See, he said, commit your works to me. Commit your actions to me. Commit your plans to me. Commit your efforts to me. And what, preacher? I cause your thoughts to become agreeable with my thoughts. So should your plans be established and succeed. Why? Because I don't want to labor in vain. Everybody look at me. Look at me, New York. Look at me, New York, especially you. Everybody look at me. Georgia is not a mistake. Where this preacher is today is not a mistake. My steps have been ordered. Hallelujah. I'm not in a mister. I'm in the perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. See, look at, look at Jesus. Everybody tell me, see, look at David out there in the wilderness on the run. A man after God's own heart. Look at Moses out there in the wilderness for 40 years. Watch this here. He's God's deliverer. See, we see, we see, you got to have eyes to see. Yes. See, look at Jesus. God, is there another way? The perfect will of God led Jesus to the cross, and they laughed at him. Church people laughed at him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they laughed at Jesus, not knowing three days later he's going to be back. Well, You'd be, surpri you be surprised how close you are to your be back. <laughs> now, you'd be, you be surprised how close you are to your be back. I, hey, hey, that's only for folk, for folk laughing at you. If they laughing at you, you close to your back. See, but he said, watch this here, family. A lot of folks are laboring in vain. See, now watch this here. Watch this here. Put my translation up there, Andy. Look at, look what the, uh, look what the Amplified Bird said. He said, roll your works upon who? The Lord. Roll your works upon who? Commit and trust them. Watch this here. Holy or totally to him. We don't talk like that now. We, we, we use the word totally. We don't like holy. That means totally to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable. Let me, everybody look at me. God ain't trying to line up with your thoughts. He's trying to get your thoughts to line up with his will, his, will, his thoughts. Yes, Lord. Simple, simple scripture. Simple, 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 simple scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. Lean not to your own and all your ways and all your ways acknowledge him, and he, uh, all of us learn that, we learn that, and, and watch this family, we learn that in Sunday school one-on-one. -on -one. 
Them kids back there, they ought to be teaching them kids, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all. <laughs> and then when them kids get 30, 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, they're going to they gonna come in, I'm going to be preaching, trust in the Lord with all, <coughs> all thy heart, lean not to thy understanding, all thy ways acknowledge God, he going to direct your path. It's when, when we lean to our own understanding. See, he said, roll your works upon the Lord. Commit them and trust them totally to him. He'll cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will, his thoughts, his word. So shall your plan be established and succeed. Look what the, 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 the amplified, uh, regular amplifier said. Commit your works to the Lord. Submit them and trust them to him. And your plans will what, family? What's it? If you respond to his will and his guidance. Somebody say if. Yeah. Because you ain't got to do what God calls you. The strongest thing in the earth is the will of man. As powerful as God is, he can't override your will. It's some folk going to bust hell wide open. And he says, it's, it's, it's not my will that any man should perish. But he said, if. Somebody say if. Yeah. If you respond to his will and to his guidance. See, I remember when I first came here, see, when I was in New York City, we used to have Bible study on Thursday night at the church I pastored. So when I came here, God told me to have my church on uh, Bible study on Tuesday. So when I, I came right here and put that church right here on Thursday. I said, God, nobody's showing up. He said, because you're doing your thing. I told my wife, I said, Lord, I hate to buy a new sign because I knew I was going to change. She said, you ain't got to buy the new sign. I'm going to take that, uh, that Thursday out there, make a little thing, put Tuesday on that thing, and, and have Brother Bill screw, them, screw that Tuesday in there. And the wind that came, that Tuesday still up there. <laughs> rough. Brother Bill put some screws in that thing. That thing, she's created, with, you know what I'm saying, with her mind, and he's created with the toolbox. <laughs> And I'm obedient to God, and we've been having Bible study on Tuesday. Why? Because he said, you can do it your way. Uh -uh. You, family, you better do it his way. You better do it. Look at your neighbor. You better do what he tells you to do. Okay, come on. We in Proverbs. Proverbs, look at verse, okay, look at verse number uh, 9. Look at Proverbs 16, 9. Proverbs 16, what? A man's heart plans his what? Everybody look at me, family. Everybody look at me. Stream light, look at me. It's your job to plan. Ted, you hear me? It, Beverly, you hear me? That's Ted and Beverly gone. It's your job to plan. See, most folks ain't doing nothing, Carol. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, who's who singing this? Thing? Nothing from nothing, leave nothing. Billy, uh, Billy Preston. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you knew that thing. Nothing from nothing. The Bible said it's your job to plan. Most folks ain't doing nothing. See, Miss Bessie. God ain't going to plan for you. That's your job. Your job is to take your plans. Your job is to take your plan. Bernard is God now. And this is Linda's plan. So God, Linda's job is to take her plans and give them to God. And God, gonna, he going to tweak something. And then he going to give it back to her. See, but he ain't going to plan for her. The, the Bible said, Victor, listen to me, Zunk. It's your job to plan. See, it's your job to plan. You take your plans. Are y'all listening to me? You take your plans and you present them to God. And then God will tell you, he said, I'm okay with that. Or he said, just change this. Or he'll tell you, not right now. See, but most of us, we're taking our plans and we're doing it. And then we get in there and say, God, will you bless? Oh, it's too late. You got to take your plans to him first. See, take your plans to God. See, 16.9 said, it said, a man's plans his way. But the Lord going to direct your steps. How many of y'all heard what I just said? He said, a man going to plan this way, but God going to direct your steps. Y'all got that? See, 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 1921, Proverbs 1921. Come on, family, Proverbs 1921. <coughs> but you got a plan. Some people ain't got no plan. They just waking up when the year went, uh, uh, thank you for another year, God. What you do this year? Uh, I don't remember. You ain't because you had no plan. God can only bless what you plan. A lot of us don't have no plan. What they said, when you plan, what they said, those without plan, plans to fail. That's another twist to it. 
those that, if you don't plan to win, you're going to plan to fail. You got a plan, you just don't know it. Successful people has a, a plan. And they work their plan. See, it ain't good, no good to have a plan and don't work your plan. Come on, family. Faith without works is dead. Proverbs 19, Proverbs 19, verse 21. If you're there, say amen. Remember, everybody look at me. Remember, those that we're talking about, those that labor in vain, those that, those that uh, 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 labor unless the Lord builds the house, you're laboring in vain. Remember that now. A lot of folks, Miss, Miss Anna, is laboring in vain. See, they're laboring in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house. Unless Lord God is building your... Remember, family, it's already written about you. So it's already written. You just got to find out what, from, from Genesis to Revelation, what already been written about you. God, what you have me to do. Most folks come in, they're doing their own thing. You don't know unless you hear by faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to hear this. So, so most folks are laboring in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, you're laboring in vain. Verse 21. To, to Dr. Miles Moreau, the late Dr. Miles Moreau, this was his favorite scripture. In honor of him, let's read it. It said, there are many plans in a man's what? There are many plans in a man what? Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that was stand. That was his favorite scripture. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord was saying, okay, Holy Spirit just gave me that. Watch his hand. The Bible says there are many plans in a man's what? Heart. Okay, let's talk about the plans of my heart. Uh, okay. When I met Linda, I had a liquor store called Lucky Liquors. Look at your neighbor. He wasn't born again. Don't, don't be looking at me like I was sipping, a sipping saint. I had a liquor store. Because I grew up in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, Bobby, you think that all, everybody on the liquor store is rich. Because you don't see better. No, everybody look, you think they rich because folks go there to cash their checks. Amen. Because you struggle. Economics. See, if you can overcome economics, that's why people expose you. So in the hood, the, the, the heroes are the drug dealers. Watch this here. The liquor store owners, the grocery store owners. See, because you don't see better. You don't know nothing about <coughs> corporate 500, corporate 100. You don't know about worldwide, world, world, worldwide businesses. So in the hood, liquor store owners, they are rich because you see them going to the bank. So when I got a bunch of money from doing the illegal stuff, I bought me a liquor store. Not knowing <laughs> that you're that you going to have to be in that liquor store 80 hours a week. I didn't want to be in that 12 hours a week. See, so, so, so watch this here, family. That was one of my plans. I got the liquor store. The next plan I got, I was a, 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 a record company executive. I had a record company called Mega Jams Record. Jazzy Faye, who y'all see right in Atlanta, Jazzy Faye was my first recording artist. And you see him on the street in, in uh, uh, what's that place, in Buckhead? Said, so Jazzy Faye, Pastor Terry said hello. <laughs> and when you come into church, that was my first audit, Electric Records, right there in New York City. And then after the liquor store, my, my wife, by the liquor store, the record company, Linda came, she, she was running the record company. And then after the record company, I sold cars. And after I sold cars, I was with Penny. After I was, I was out with Penny, I was a pastor of a church. See, I'm showing you that was many plans. But before I got to, the, before I got to God, though, because when I, got, when I got out and started selling cars, now God has ordered my steps. But I remember when the car lot came against me, I had some money, and Linda and I, we was looking for uh, uh, certain businesses that we could go into, and we was about to open up, you remember? A basket and robber. God didn't want me to more so be in a basket and robber <laughs> than a robin in a basket. <laughs> See, I'm doing things my way. And then I remember when they came against me, we was going to move out of Memphis to Charlotte North. God blocked that. And then I remember when Penny came to try to make me his business manager, we was going to have to move from Memphis to Orlando. God blocked that. See, when you're walking with God, he'll block a lot of stuff. See, and the next year Penny came and got me and took me from Memphis to Arizona. That's why I got trained in ministry. Baby, God know what he's doing. It's already been written. God will block stuff. 
He blocked Baskin and Robin. He blocked us going to Charlotte. He blocked me going to Charlotte, I mean, to Orlando with Penny. I said, a devil, I call the devil everything. <laughs> that wasn't the devil, that was God. God wanted me in Arizona. I can't tell you, one day I'm going to teach you on the blocks of God. He blocked you because he's trying to get you to the right door. Lord, Lord. I'm telling you right now. God will block you because he's trying to get you to, mm -hmm, to the right door. See, but most folks are laboring in vain. That's a powerful scripture right there. There are many, somebody say many, many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, it's the Lord counsel that was telling Jesus told her that. Jesus said, God, is there another way? Father, is there another way? Do I have to go through the cross? Finally, what did he say? Nevertheless, not my <coughs> will, but. See, why you know, see, let me tell you something. The cross ain't no joke. How you know the cross ain't no joke? Because everybody deserved it. But right before that, Peter stood up and said, Lord, I ain't going to never leave you. All these other cowards can leave you, but your boy going to be here for you. Your girl going to be here for you. They whipped uh, uh, Jesus back. Pow, Peter started doing this. <laughs> And the more things hit you, your people around you. <laughs> and you're going to say, where is some? They gone. Why? God wants you to know, number one, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he wants you to know who your real people are. He wants you. You don't, hey, you don't know who your real people are until hard times come. My wife sent me a quote the other day. She said, when we won, when I won, we won. When I lost, I lost. No, y'all didn't catch that. She said, no, 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 no. She said, she said, when we won, it, we won. When I lost, I lost. I ain't no we lost. But I'm okay with that because I understand how he worked. Are y'all with me, family? I understand how he worked. Now let's go to Exodus chapter. I got 20 minutes. I don't know. I'm going to do everything I can. I've been getting, trying to get to this page. Remember, family, rem somebody say remember. The whole thing about this lesson today is, listen, stream of life, unless the Lord builds the house. That's the whole crux to what I'm talking about now. That's the foundation. That's the main point. Unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor are laboring in what? Okay, okay, okay. The Holy Spirit just brought something up to me, I remember. Before the liquor store came, watch this here. I want to be a professional baseball player, right? I was good in catching, but when they just throw that hard ball in there, I'm jumping out the box swinging like this. <laughs> <coughs> Somebody said for many years. I had got out of the military. My wife, but well, she went with me then. I had got out of the military. Me and a good friend of mine, Pastor Robert Jones, he's with the Lord right now, for years, we thought we were going to be a professional baseball player. And neither one of us could hit the ball. But you know we could do good. We could bunt real good. Ain't nobody bunting in the major league but the pitchers. And my arm wasn't strong enough to be a pitcher. See, that was one of my plans. I had told my mom, when I get old enough, I'm going to be a professional baseball player. I'm going to make, two, back then, I'm going to make $250,000 a year. Now they're making twenty, thirty million million a year. I'm going to get you out the hood. Babe, my baseball game was terrible. No wonder my sister laughed. No wonder she laughed at me. See, because family, everybody growing up, like TJ. TJ wanted to be a professional basketball player. That I'm going to shake these folks, I'm going to shoot threes, I'm going to be walking while they're going in. You know, because <laughs> he got a great imagination. Come on, come on, fam. Same thing with Monica Boyd. They the same way. I guarantee you, every last one of them jokers want to play professional basketball. Why? They want to help their mama. Anybody struggling and dealing with, they want to get out so they can help their mama. See, now TJ want to be a professional goat. He want to, every time he see Tiger, I see the gleam in his eye. He want to put that ball and see the crowd go crazy while he doing this. <laughs> it's the same way in preaching. I'm believing God for thousands of people. It's the same way. You got to have a vision. I ain't mad at it. I told him, dream, young man, dream. Go for it. Me and your mama going to be right there on the sideline saying, I knew he could do it all alone. That's my boy. 
That's my boy right there, TJ. He got my name, Terry Jr. <laughs> Go ahead and dream. But watch this here. But watch this here, family. Watch this here. Watch this here. Unless, the whole thing is, unless the Lord builds the house, you're late. Come on, family. I'm just teaching because I'm the pastor. But it's a lot of things. If you wrote down all the things you was going to be, it's like you see them folks go on American Idol. They're going to be a disgrace singer. And they open their mouth and say, baby, your parents should have told you. Don't, baby, don't go in there whipping Simon Macau and all them folks. Don't go in there and waste their time. And then they mad. Tell me, one day you're going to hear about me. It, I want, I start, it won't be about singing. A lot of folks got plans. See? See, unless the Lord builds a house, you are laboring in vain. Now, let's get down. Come on, I got 16 minutes. Y'all ready? Uh, Exodus chapter number what? Remember, unless the Lord builds a house, you're laboring in vain. Now, watch this here. Everything is about building. Watch this here. Exodus 25, verse number 40. Look at Exodus 25, verse number 40. Y'all ready? It says, and he told Moses, and, and see to it. See what? That you make them, talking about the tabernacle, watch this here, according to the pattern which was shown you on the what? Yeah. Now everybody look at me. Moses getting ready to be a God of tabernacle, right? He getting ready to build. Somebody say build. Yeah. God said, Moses, you make sure you build this tabernacle exactly like I showed you on the mountain. Don't you go down there and tell me, and, and tell me let's put some gold on this. Let's put some wood on there. Uh-uh. You build it exactly like I show you. Family, God going to show you exactly what he wants you to do. Because you don't know. Are you with me? So now, <clears throat> now watch this here. Now watch this here. So put the, uh, uh, okay, I want, okay. So the God's Word translation said, I want for you to build this tabernacle exactly like I show you. But now I want for you to see this here. I want for you to see something. Go to uh, 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 Hebrews chapter number 8. Hebrews chapter number what? So he told him, see to it. See to it that you build them according to the pattern which was shown you on the what? On the mountain. Okay, now Hebrews chapter number what? 8 verse 5. Hebrews 8 5. Come on. I'm building a case here. Amen. I'm going to close the door on this situation. Hebrews chapter number 8. Verse number five. If you're there, say man. He said, who serve the copy and the shadow of the heavenly thing. The copy and the shadow of the what? Heavenly thing. heavenly thing. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, for God said to him, see to it. See that you make all things according to the pattern of that was showed you on the what? Okay, now family, I got to get this out of the uh, uh, um, different translation. Anybody here can so get, understand patterns? Raise your hand. You, my wife, anybody else understand patterns? Any, 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 any understand patterns? Okay, okay. Watch this here. I see Michael. He's supposed to raise his hand there. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, watch this here, family. I want for you to see Hebrews chapter what? 8 verse 5. And I want to read it out of the... Uh, I got a couple of translations that I want for you to see. I want the CEV in the God's Word translation. Watch this here, family. Verse number five. Hebrews 8 5. Watch this here. It says, But the tent where they served is just a copy and a shadow of the real one in heaven. Before, somebody say before. Before Moses made the tent, he was told, Be sure to make it exactly like the pattern you were shown on the what? Okay, on the mountain. Now watch this here, family. I want to read it out of the, the God's Words translation. Somebody say exactly. Be sure you build it exactly like I showed you on the mountain. Look at what verse 5 said. They serve, as a, they serve at a place that is a pattern. In other words, everybody look at me, family. Your life has already been written in heaven. You're living out, streaming life, you're living out the book that already been written on you in heaven. So he said, make sure your life line up with the book. Did y'all get that? So he said, don't go, don't go down to earth. Remember, the Bible says, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, before using your mother's belly. <clears throat> before using your mother's belly, I knew you. So he's saying, when I send you to earth, make sure you build your life 
based on what I show you from heaven. That's good now. You got to catch what I just said. But most of us come down here and we're doing earthly things. We ought to look to heaven, which is the book. We ought to look to heaven, which is the Holy Spirit, and say, okay, show me how to build this thing based on what's already written. Are you with me? So look what he told Moses. They served at a place that is a pattern, a shadow of what is in heaven. When Moses was about to make the tent, God warned him. That's where I want you to see. God did what? He warned him, be sure to make everything based on the plan I show you on the mountain. Now, watch this. Put my two definitions up. Put my two definitions up. I want you to put up the definition of, uh, uh, of pattern. Put my definition of pattern up. Now, everybody look at me, pattern. He said, now, God warned him. Everybody look at me. It's a warning to you. When I teach this word, it's a warning. God said, it's a wake-up call. He said, now, I'm warning you. When you go back down there, you make sure you build this tabernacle exactly like I showed you from heaven. See, it's a warning. So what is pattern? A pattern is something designed and used as a what? Okay, okay, okay. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. When they made this suit that I'm, well, we can't use my suit. Uh, who got a store-bought uh, piece of item on? Okay, okay. This is a good example. My shirt. My shirt, they make thousands of these shirts. They make one, one shirt. They take the pattern for it and make thousands from it. Y'all got that? My shoes, my shoes, they take, they make one shoe, they take the pattern for that shoe and make thousands of shoes. Are you with me? So he's saying something that, what's that, pattern is something designed or used as a model for making things. It's a form or a model purpose for imitation. So what is the, what is the, uh, uh, he says something designed or used as a model. Anybody know what, what our model is for the church? Jesus is. He's our example. He said, he said, watch him, study him, and do exactly what he did. Say exactly what he said. Do exactly what he did. See, that's our pattern. That's our model. And see, guess what? In this earth right now, we got millions of people walking around who ought to be just like Jesus, saying what he's saying, <clears throat> doing what he did, acting like he acted. Are you with me? So a pattern is something designed and used as a model for making things. It's a form of model. What's their purpose for imitation? But look what the word warn is. He said, now, I warn you. Family, it's a warning to you. Don't think just coming to church. God's warning you. Don't you get to the end of your life and say, and then get to the end of your life, just be at the end and then do what God told you to do. He said, I'm warning you. Warning me to give notice to beforehand. To give notice to before. He said, Moses, don't you go back down there and do your own thing. I already showed you how you should make this tabernacle. Make sure you make it exactly like I showed you on the mountain. Now watch this here, family. To give notice to beforehand, especially of danger or evil. To call to someone's attention, to forewarn, to caution, to advise or to what? Alert. See, to advise or to alert. So he said, remember now, unless the Lord builds the house, you're laboring in vain. But we're talking about God tells us how to, watch this, God tells us how to instruct or how to build. Because when you come here, you don't know, you don't come here with instruction. When you come here, you have to find out through the instruction, which is the word of God, on how to build. Go to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 8. We're talking about building something. We're talking about designing something. See, Unless the Lord builds the house, most folks are laboring in vain. See? And God, he'll tell you, asking you shall receive. Seeking you shall find, knocking the door should be open. Most folks are doing their own, and they frustrate. you frustrated because as soon as you get into what God calls you to do, frustration is going to leave. I ain't never, that's what I do. I'm called to preach. I thought it was baseball. I thought it was a liquor store. I thought it was the independent record company. I thought it was being pen as business, man. This preacher, y'all seeing somebody in his cold. And I ain't frustrated. I get out of bed, baby, I can do this here. All I got to do is wipe that stuff out of my eye, and I start preaching to you. Bad breath and everything. <laughs> Amen. Now watch this here. Watch this here. So God tells us how to instruct and how to what? Be a. 
So in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 8, Hebrews 11, 8, if you're there, say me. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 8. Look what, the, look what the word of God said, family. Look what the word of God. By faith. Somebody said by faith. by faith. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he received as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith. Somebody say by faith. By faith. He dwelled in the land of promise as, a foreign, as, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, of the same promise. For he waited. For he what? Waited. For he waited for the city which has foundation, who builder and maker is who? Sometimes you got to wait on something. What you waiting on, Pastor? I'm waiting on, I'm looking for the city. I'm looking for the place God already designed for my life. Watch this here. Put that up in a, look, she got the uh, NET translation. Look up her family. Look at her. It said, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place. He will later receive as inheritance. He went out without understanding where he was going. By faith, he lived as a foreigner in the promised land as though it was a foreign country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were the fellow heirs of the same promise. Verse 10 is all I want to talk about. For he was looking, or I like to say God, Holy Spirit gave me a better translation. He said, Terry, not only he was looking, but he was looking forward or waiting, waiting, to the city, he was waiting, looking to the city with firm foundation, who architect and builder is who? God. Unless the Lord builds the house, you're laboring. Let me tell you something, family. God is the architect and builder of your life. How many of y'all heard what I just said? He's the architect and builder of your So Abraham was looking forward to the city with firm foundation, whose architect and builder is God. Y'all heard what I just said? Now watch this here, family. Andy, you, you go to my next translation, but I want for you guys to go somewhere else. I want y'all to go to Romans chapter number one. Go to Romans chapter number one. I'm going to show you. Remember he said this is just a shouting copy of things on earth as it is in heaven. It ain't the real thing, but it's a copy. Let me show you what God showed me. Romans chapter number one, verse number 20. We're just going to take one scripture out of there. Romans 1. Chapter 1, verse number 20. Mm -hmm. Unless the Lord builds the house, you are laboring in vain. God tells us or instructs us on how to build. Y'all ready? Watch this here, family. Verse 20. For since, for since the, the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. His invisible attributes are what? clearly seen, <coughs> being understood by the things that he, by the things that he, now everybody look at me. I don't know if I'm going to get to it, but I'm going to show you how God designed the Ark of the Covenant, how he told Noah to build the Ark. How he, I'm going to show you how God is into details, how God is specific. Why? The Bible says you can look at the, the unseen thing. That, look at verse 20. The invisible attributes are clearly seen and understood by things that are made. So he's saying when you see the ark of the covenant, when you see the ark that he made Noah to make, or when you see Solomon's temple, he told them how to build this temple. He told them how to build the ark of the covenant. He told them how Moses, the ark, or Noah to build the ark. He said you can look at things that seem to know that I'm talking about things, how you should build your life. See, let me tell you something, family. God ain't just no happenstance God. God ain't just no haul off and do God. Uh, God has a plan for your life. He know the thoughts and plans he think towards you, thoughts and plans to prosper you, to give you an expected end. Look at what the, uh, uh, God's word translation said, verse 10. It said, Abraham was waiting. Abraham was what? For the city that God has designed in. Hey, hey, family, you got to understand. Abraham was looking for the city that God had. Most of us, we just get up in the morning, we ain't doing nothing. Look, you got to have your eyes open and say, God, is this the place? God, is this what you want me to do? God, is this what you want me to say? He said, Abraham was waiting for the city that God had designed and built, the city with permanent foundation. In other words, when, when, whatever God give you, the gates of hell can't prevail against it. 
See, I'm looking. That's why when I do what God called me to do, I know he's right there with me. So Abraham, he was not only, the, remember we just read a translation where he was looking forward to, but this translation said Abraham was waiting for the city that God had designed and built, the city with, with firm foundation. This is what most church folk do. This is what most first church do. Carol, this is what they do, and, and, and it's ignorance. This is what they do. They go to a building, Victor, in the name of Jesus. This is my building. They go to a house. Come here, come here. I want all of y'all to hear this. In the name of Jesus, you are my house. Baby, if God ain't told you that's your house, that's your building, that's your car, that's your husband, especially church when walk right there, can I, can I holler at you? Now, can, can I speak to you for a minute? Can I holler at you? Okay, what you want to holler at me about? God told me, you my husband. Uh, I am? All right, as soon as God tells me, you will be my wife. <laughs> Let me tell you something, family. He was waiting. The Bible said, be still and know that I'm God. Let me, let me, let me, let me leave y'all with this here. Let me leave y'all with this here. We'll pick up next week because I got so much more to tell you. Let me, let me leave you with this here. Uh, it takes years for you to, find it, to figure this thing out. Zonka, you hear what I just said? It takes bond. It takes. It took Moses 80 years. It took Abraham. He was 100 when he had Isaac. It takes years. Somebody say years. Year. It took years for Pastor Terry to figure this out. But he was waiting. Go back to, what are you doing? <laughs> Watch this here. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. What that? He was waiting for the city that God had what? Designed and built. Guess what you're looking for? You're looking for, this is good, streaming live. You're looking for something that God already designed and built for you. Yeah. Yeah. How many of y'all receive what I just said? Yeah. See, Katrina, I ain't claiming nothing ain't been designed and built for me. Amen. But Miss Bessie, when he showed his preacher, said, that's yours. Victor, it's on. Look at your neighbor that fight's on. Because I ain't, watch this here. I ain't just up there pointing at builders and houses and cars and wives and, and stuff. Tell me, you, you can have whatever you say. You're going to have whatever you say if he told you you can say. Because look what the Bible said. God, Abraham was waiting and looking for the city that God had designed and built, the city with in other words, when God shows you something, it's yours forever. Y'all been hearing what I'm saying? When, when you see something and God says, you're going to run this company, you need to say like Mary, be it done unto me, Lord, according to that. Because you weren't thinking that. When God tell you you're going to be a billionaire, you're going to be a millionaire, you're going to do this here, you're gonna, you need to say, Lord, be it done unto me <coughs> according to thy word. Let me give y'all one last scripture and we out of here. Where are we going, Holy Spirit? Where are we going? Where are we going? Go to Genesis chapter 13. Keep that scripture at the end. Amen. <laughs> Genesis chapter number what? Uh-uh. He was looking forward to. He was waiting. Be still and know that I'm God. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, you're laboring in vain. So you need to wait. But now let me show you something. Let me tell you something. When God tells you to move, you better move. Because a lot of people, Pastor, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting on God. Baby, be 80 years. You're about to... So I'm just waiting on God. But now let me tell you something. It might, take God, it might take God time to tell you to move. But when he tell you to move, all the doors open. Come on, family. And see, and while you're waiting on him, you ought to be preparing for the wait. How many of y'all heard what I just said? While you're waiting on him, you ought to be preparing for the wait. So when he, when he moved, a lot of us, we ain't ready. We ain't prepared. It got to go to the next man. It got to go to the next man. See, but he was waiting for the city, the place that God had designed. He was the architect and builder, the city. See, when God gives you some, the gates of hell can't prevail again. When God gives you some, can't nobody take it from you. Watch this here, family. I'm in uh, Genesis chapter number what? Verse 14. Genesis 13, 14. Last scripture. Y'all ready? And the Lord said, who said? At the Lord has separated from him. Now, God is talking. 
Lift your eyes, Abraham. Somebody say now. And look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for all the land which you, for all the land which you, I give to you and your descendants. Somebody tell me how long. It's permanent. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number, why does it say a man could number the dust of the earth? So if a man could number the dust of the earth, your descendants also could be numbered. Arise. Walk in the land. Walk in the place. Through his length, through his width. For I what, family? For I what? Somebody tell me what the next three words said. Then Abraham, now it's time to move. See, now God said, everybody look at me. God said, Abraham, you know where you at right now? This, this is yours. I can't tell you how it happened to me. I'm going to play. God said, this is yours. Don't know about Noah. It is. What's it? For real, dog? That's how he speak. Once you get in the place, Bob, God said, this is yours. I remember my man of God, Bishop Jakes, was in this house. He had come from poverty, and he was in this big old house. Big old house. 20, 30,000 foot home. And this, this realtor took him to this house. And he walking around in it. Because he thinking, God, I can't afford nothing like this here. So finally him, Sarita, and the realtor was walking. And he told him, y'all go at home. And he got back there in the room. He said, God, can I have this? God said, this is yours. It's our own family. See, let me tell you what God will do. But now I'm telling you, I'm living this stuff. God will get you in the place. And you in the place, watch this here. You in the place, brother Bill, celebrating somebody else. And then God said, I want to tap you. God said, here, tap you on the shoulder. What's up? This is yours. Huh? <laughs> True story. I'm telling you. Victor, you can be in something. God said, this is yours. They in there celebrating Katrina. But God look at you and said, this is yours. And you're saying, for, you know you ain't come up with it because you're rebuking the devil. And you know you're not a covetous person. All God got to do is get you in the right place. And when he gets you in the right place, he said, now, you're in the right place. Now walk the length of it. Walk the width of it. Now put your foot on that thing. And while you're walking, what about you go to a boat? God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for, see, don't let nobody, don't let nobody know too quick. That's what Joseph did. They're going to sell your tail in the pit. They're going to put you in the pit. <laughs> see, soon as God tells you, you got to get there in you first. And once you, when I, when, let me tell you something, family. When I tell you, it's too late. I already got it. You can't abort this baby. And then the Bible said, Abraham moved. Why? Because God just spoke. A lot of us moving and God ain't spoke. But when God speak, I'm moving. This girl right here didn't want to come to Georgia. She said, where are we going? We're going to Georgia. I didn't choose Georgia. Y'all was not on my mind. <laughs> That's how God moved. That's how you know it's God. It's not on your mind. God said, you can have that. That's yours. It's just a whisper. A still, small voice. It's a whisper. That's yours. And don't be going there, God, you know, I, I barely graduated from high school. God, 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 I'm, I'm a black woman. God, I'm a black man. God, I'm a white man. God, I'm Hispanic. God, baby, God know who you are. He already wrote the book on you. He know what side of track you from. Hey, man, he know you like orange suits <laughs> with your rainbow color wing. He know what you like. You need to look at him and say, yes, Lord, I receive it. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand, pray. <laughs> I receive in the name of Jesus. He going to get you in the right place. And when he gets you there, you, ain't, you don't even know it. All of a sudden, he starts speaking to you. Everybody around you cheering. And, Lord, this. But let me tell you something, family. Let me warn you. With the blessing come persecution. That's the problem. Eric, you hear what I just said? See, most folk Carol can't stand to be blessed. Because when the blessing comes, it's going to bring persecution. See, we just want to be blessed and everybody like us. Ah, um, baby, take the persecution and go along with it too. See, take the persecution too.